everybody to the awesome dynamic show. Terry Levin from beautiful Vernon Hills, Illinois today. It's actually getting nice here. And uh, wanted to introduce you around to everybody here. As you know, the awesome dynamic show, we like to feature some businesses, look at their websites and their uh, online presence, get a good feel for how they can improve it and uh, draw more customers. So we want to take us around the room real quick and say hello to everybody. So I will switch you over to Robin. Hello, I'm Robin. I do the SEO for Awesome Dynamic, which is search engine optimization. And you're going to get a lot of great tips today. Where are we going from here? Uh, here's Paul. <laughs> Hi, my name is uh, Paul DeWarian. I'm the owner and president of Awesome Dynamic. Uh, Terry did a great intro to, to the webinar here. We're always excited to help folks who attend the webinar to increase their online presence uh, or anything else that you might have questions on. Um, but uh, Ter Terry's taking on the leadership role in the webinar, and uh, he's been doing a fantastic job. Um, I'm actually uh, talking to you from Florida, uh, Fort Myers, actually, and uh, it's 95, I think it's like 95 degrees outside today, which I know is not what it is by Terry and Robin, um, but uh, uh, working, from, working from this area for, for a couple months, and then I'll be headed back to the Chicagoland area. Uh, Back to you, Terry. All right. Well, thank you very much, Paul. So I'd like to start off, if we could, by uh, putting up the home page so we can tell everybody a little bit about what we do. So our main goal for you is to get you more customers. And there's a lot of ways we can help doing that. And the first one is to is that we will do responsive web design for you, which means that you will get a mobile-friendly website from us, one that will look good on a big monitor, and a tablet, and a laptop, and all the way down to your smartphone. Uh, in this day and age, about over 60% of all searches are on a mobile device, so very important that your website function well for people on their tablets and phones, because if it doesn't, they bounce. It means they go somewhere else and look for a different company to help them with what they need. So we take care of those for you. Next, we do some search engine optimization. And we have many different programs to do that for people, but we want to help you get found on Google because it's great to have a good website, but we need to drive people to that website, and those are going to be people that are specifically looking for what you have to offer. We want to make sure that you're getting more traffic and there are more leads, more customers. We also are Amazon sellers, and we do a consulting package for Amazon. A lot of people trying to get their products on Amazon getting frustrated with a lot of the technicalities of doing so. There's a lot of different options. We are experts at doing that and have a couple different programs where we can set up accounts for people, we can manage accounts for people, and we actually do some distributing where we buy products from companies and sell them on Amazon. So a lot of different ways we can help, and that's becoming quite a big niche for us. There's a lot of people with frustrations about their Amazon selling and we're here to help. And lastly, we do Google Street View, the 360 tours, which is a great way to get your business seen by other by a bunch of people, get a good feel for your business, the size of your business, professionalism of your business. Just get a good look at it. They're able to actually walk right in off the street through Google Maps and have a look at what's going on in your business. Also gives you quite a boost of SEO value if your competition doesn't have a tour and you do have a tour. So that is those are our, our main functions that we offer as a company. We also will have free webinars. As you know, here's a list showing the upcoming ones. We do one every Thursday. We rotate the times between 3 o'clock Central, like today, and 12.30 Central so that people have a good opportunity to come and see them. Uh, what else am I missing here? We have our event tab up at the top of our website where we will list other events that we have. I think we have a review party coming up shortly that should be on there. And uh, we, we love our local people to come to these. We want to teach people how to get review Google reviews, five-star, of course, and the importance of doing that and managing those things can, is a great way to really improve your, uh, your presence online uh, for a lot of reasons. We like to talk about those. So we're always trying to do a bunch of different things to help our, uh, our clients out with uh, having a better presence. We also have our mailing list, the awesome list. Robin showing you where you can get on there and sign up for that and make sure you get all our notifications of everything we have going on. Uh, always on our website you can see our, our previous webinars as well. 
So, and then when you're done with our webinar, assuming that you had a great time and learned a lot, you can always give us a five star review. And it's, there's a way on here to go right through here and go ahead and do that. We always appreciate that. And Robin, what did I miss? That's it. All right. You can Good always job, go Sarah. back and watch this webinar as well because it's recorded. That's right. And one thing I wanted to point out, Terry, uh, is uh, Jessica, my my wife, also works uh, works with us. Uh, she's listed as operations manager now. She's doing more marketing. Uh, but uh, if you, I'm sharing my screen now. Uh, the new our new website's coming together uh, with the with the new tagline "Demand Awesome." And we got the slides up there, and it's uh, it's starting to look really good. So I'm I'm excited to get this uh, this new website launched live. Uh, hopefully, beginning of next week, we'll see. All right. That's Back fantastic. to you, Terry. Looking good. Looking Thank good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Well, we're very excited about that, and there you got a little view of our of our team, so you can put a little face to uh, everybody that's here and the ones that you don't see that are behind the scenes. And for me as a sales director, I just want to say, like I always do, these are all the people that make me look really good and are always fulfilling all the promises that I make to our potential clients. So we always want to thank Robin, Paul, and everybody else who's, who's there getting all these things done for us and making me look good. So with that being said, as what we usually do on the webinar is feature some businesses that want to get a feel for how their website looks, how it's doing, and what kind of online presence they have. So our first uh, subject of the day is Glen Flora Country Club, which is in Waukegan, Illinois. And that's a beautiful course. Been there myself, although I don't golf, but I have been there for some events, and it's really nice. And I don't know, we may have Nick Jones, who's the membership and marketing uh, person there, on with us. Hopefully he was going to try to jump in with us and uh, participate in this. But uh, Robin, you want to jump in? This is their new website, so let's be nice. But let's talk <laughs> about how they did and where they're at and, and what we think of it. Yeah, I can tell right away just from the pictures and from um, you know the logo up here that it's very clear. It says Country Club right here, so you know um, that it's a, a country club. Um, what I want uh, what I want to see is maybe the address up here so we can see that it's local. Um, it does say Chicago's North Shore down here, but uh, I can see that it is in Waukegan. So we'd want to put that address up here and contact info right up here, even though I know you have contact here and you have contact information down here. But if someone visited your website and wanted to sign up today, you would uh, want to have a phone number there if they wanted more information. Uh, Robin, how long, i sorry to interrupt, but how long, what, what do we usually talk about in terms of how long that people will take a look at this first part of the website and sort of make their decisions about staying on it, looking around more, and going forward with it? Yeah, you usually have between three and five seconds before someone clicks off of your website. So if they go on Google, search for Country Club, for example, I got up here, Country Club in Lake County, or just country club in, I know they're in Waukegan, they show up number one on Waukegan. So if someone clicks on you, they you want them to um, to stay on the website and know that they clicked in the right place. So it needs to be very inviting, set the tone of as if they were walking into your front desk right now, you want that same kind of message to be on your website. Um, so they have like three to what is it, three to five, six seconds to really sort of make that first impression and lock people in? Yes, and even less for loading time. So if the website doesn't even load in a, a second or two, they're going to click off um, to the next button. Just think about when you Google something and you click on the result you want, if you just see a blank page trying to load, how long do you wait until you press the reload button or the back button? So it's probably under two or three seconds. Okay. Um, but then once it, the page loads, then you have you know three to five seconds to look around really quickly at the maybe you look at the menu, look at the picture, um, and so you definitely want to leave that first impression. It's really important. I can see that um, the pictures going across the whole screen is a great effect to to show how uh, you know kind of larger than life this this course is. Then you can see that um, they have a short intro. I would definitely add more here. Um, and add more pictures, and I would definitely add a video because this is definitely um, a, the kind of business that a video would benefit from. Um, and then definitely add more to the About Us. It looks like this is the footer down here, so this information is not, it doesn't look like it's in the footer. 
Um, so we definitely want your name, address, and phone number in the footer and the header and on the contact page. Okay. When you're talking about a video, I mean, is that a video showing the course? Is that a video of somebody from the court, you know, from the club talking a little bit about the the club? What it, what would be good? Uh, really, something that best represents your business. If someone asks you the question, "What do you guys do?" or "What makes you different?" Um, and then it doesn't have to be a live action video, like someone talking to the camera. It could be, you know, shots of uh, the different places in the club, and then a voiceover and mm -hmm. maybe some music in the background. Yeah. Okay. All right. What else you got? Um, uh, I like that. This. I was oh, going to say, do you mind if I jump in with a comment? Please, Go come on in. All right. Um, I noticed when I was watching the slideshow, just kind of sitting back and watching it, uh, this this particular slide says banquets and weddings at uh, the country club. Would you mind going back to that slide for a second, Robin? And it says the, the check marks here. Events of any size, unique private club and experience, exquisite food and beverage. Okay, so this slide works really well for promoting the banquets and weddings. I think it does a great job. Uh, hit the back button, Robin, though, not the back button on the browser, but the, yeah. Now, what's interesting here, golf outings, and it says events of any size, a unique private club experience, exquisite foods and beverage. This says exactly the same thing as the other one. Right. And um, the other thing I noticed that this one picture is the only one that doesn't have, uh, doesn't do that wall-to-wall, -wall, meaning all the way from the left and to the right side, it's cut off. Um, so I, I would like to see that these three bullet points be different from the other ones and something that's more specific to golf outings at this country club and how that differs from the events and banquets. So it's more specific because not only is that duplicate content, but um, you know, we want to speak to the person about why your golf outing is better than any other golf outing. Um, and we want to get this picture swapped out so we can see uh, that it goes all the way from left to right side. Uh, if you go forward, Robin, to the other slide, this one's a beautiful picture. Uh, I love that these three items here, a hidden gem classic, superb lawns, uh, superb service and uh, amenities, 104 years of tradition. Um, that's great, but you know what's missing from underneath those that the other two have? Is that learn more, that call to action to go and learn more about this. So the other two, I notice, have the learn more button there, but the first one doesn't. So we're, uh, definitely, uh, we definitely don't have that there. Uh, going back to this home page, Robin, uh, I looked at the slideshow and then I started looking at the main navigation. Obviously, they do golf. They do the events and weddings. Uh, but the slides only talk about the golf and the weddings. They don't talk about anything related to tennis. And I see tennis is up there. So if you're looking to grow the number of folks that you have playing tennis at the country club, and if, if that's something that other people... Uh, you want to draw people in for, there should probably be a slide in the main slideshow just for tennis. So just a few comments there of different things that I, I thought might be important with that first impression that you're trying to make with folks. And a picture uh, of a tennis court somewhere on the tennis page. Yeah, uh, that would be great because, I mean, I don't know who these people are, Andrew and Gretchen. Uh, I'm sure they, uh, you know, they have something to do with tennis, but my first impression isn't tennis when I see that picture. So, um, you know, tennis, tennis courts, just like golf courses on the homepage, definitely bring that idea and that feeling uh, with the, what is it, a picture speaks a thousand words. We want the right thousand words there. But, Robin, I'll give it back to you so you can do some more evaluation. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at the contact page. So I can see that this differs from that learn more button, but it still had a contact on there, we have first name, last name, email address, phone number, and comment. That's a pretty simple form, uh, which is great. You don't want to overwhelm them with too much information. Um, but let's say um, if this is like, if you wanted them to have the option of filling out a full form for joining for membership, um, you could put that on the membership page. I see that it's also a simple form here, but you do have contact information here too. Uh, another option would be to download form and fill it out online and. Uh, so that when they get there, they don't have to fill it out. And I see that you have a ton of options here. So what I would do is explain each one of those because uh, it doesn't look like these are explained here. Um, so I would have a paragraph for each one of these, if not a page for each one. You could have a, just like how you have the drop down for golf, you could have a drop down for every kind of membership um, as one option. Let's see, weddings and events. 
You have a great, uh, looks like a stock photography picture there. Um, what I would do is break up the text a little bit more with some bullet points. Um, but I do like that you have a lot of pictures in here, which is great. Also would add a video to all of your main service pages here. Uh, that is a big ranking factor and it also helps you know, the user experience. Um, so you have menu here, which um, can be confusing between, I, I would probably have like clubhouse here or something like that because it looks like you know it's the main navigation maybe that looks like the home page um, but I can see you have the event date here which is required um, you might want to take that off of there and once they get on the phone with you um, then see so you have the time here as well once they get on the phone with you then then you can ask them okay what's the date and time which dates work for you um, so that they don't have to initially fill that out um, we usually find with people uh, with these kind of forms that the less you ask them, the more apt they are to fill it out. Right, and if if the idea here is we want leads for people that are going to become, you know, people that are renting the 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 venue for a wedding or or do anything, we, if if the idea is we want, I want this website to get me leads. Um, asking them a zillion questions isn't going to make it happen any easier. So if you just keep it super simple, instead of first name, last name, just do name. Email address, phone, leave an area for them to leave a comment, submit. You can get all that other information from them on the phone, uh, but if, you, if they don't fill it out at all, you'll never get their information. So statistically speaking, the more stuff you ask them to fill out, the less likely it is for them to get you that information. So if you're if the goal here is to make sure the website's giving you more leads, uh, ask them less stuff, and that's going to work out well. The other thing I, a couple things I noticed here, uh, Robin, as you scroll down, underneath the form uh, on some of the other pages, I'm noticing it's just like a giant white space. Um, so you know, getting that, in, I, I, Robin, you may have mentioned that, but just getting the information to format better on the page can give it a more professional upscale look because right now you know the picture is not as wide as the space and the text is going off to the right of the photo so it's it's kind of kind of weird that it's not formatted nicely uh, and professionally I also noticed that the click here we have click here click here click here click here um, if there are underlying links and at the top it says click the links below for each of the different menus and you click on each menu uh, that would make more sense rather than having all this click here stuff that's just really awkward looking. Yeah, I'd probably do the same thing as the golf and just have a weddings drop down and have each one of these their own page. Then you can um, write 300, 300 to 600 words on each one of these. That'll get you to start ranking if someone um, types in a Google, um, you know, they want to have a wedding, what, what's the best wedding venue or wedding package? Where's the, I need a golf package, I need, you know, a luncheon, where's a good place to host a luncheon? Um, then they can go directly, instead of going to your home page, they'll go directly to your luncheon page. Great point. I think that's important. Now, did we take a look yet at their uh, mobile-friendly test and page speeds? Um, we yeah, we can definitely take a look at that, but just really quickly, um, you can see that this About Us here is in the footer, so that's going to be duplicated in all of the parts of the website. Um, what you want to do is put that about us on the home page. That could be some of the text right here. Um, then you can add add definitely more here. Um, some people recommend 1500 words on the home page. I know it's a lot, but um, you can put pictures with it and it really helps Google to know what your website is all about. And you can break that up, text up with bullet points, some infographics, some pictures, videos. So 1500 words sounds like a lot, but it can, um, when it's broken up with headers and things like that, um, it can make a really effective home page. So on that subject overall, Robin, do, is there enough content? Is there, do they have enough content on these pages, you think, or do they need to? They need a lot more. Yeah. Yeah. Like, for example, if I click on ladies golf, is this 300 to 600 words? No. Um, uh, do their competitors have more on their website? Do they have more pictures? Do they have more text? Probably. Um, so you want to definitely beat out your competitors when you're um, writing these pages. And this all comes out to what we always talk about is uh, there's the human side of the SEO and then there's the, the other side of the SEO. We got to really take care of both. So that's where we get it. We want it to be appealing. We want it to look good. We want to grab people, but we also have to meet these requirements for Google to make sure that we're able to rank where we want to rank and people are finding our site. 
Yeah, so if you're ranking well on Google, if you're ranking number one and someone clicks on your website, but you can see that all of them are leaving your website, there's a reason. So you have to make your pages more engaging. Paul, were you going to jump in? Yeah, I was going to say, it seems to me that this design is a template um, and that... Uh, yeah, I, I, I could imagine the template looked really nice, and that's why the header and the, the footer look really solid and clean, but the middle content area doesn't look like it's really been developed uh, as professionally as it could. So, um, yeah, the, these pictures, I, I know they're, they're probably pictures of folks that are there, uh, but you're just, just commenting on a couple things on the right. If, if that picture could have been taken from the other side, so the sun was hitting their faces instead of the sun at their backs, you could actually see who they are there. Right. Um, I mean, there's, there's just little things like, yeah, the, the, this picture down here, uh, and the bottom there, I'm just kind of wondering why there's three side by side. And the left picture doesn't align left with the text there, and the right picture doesn't align right there, and why the spacing's different between the different items there. All that stuff really makes the site look pro and polished versus just kind of slapped together. So, um, you know, there's, there's some little tweaks here and there that could really make it um, look higher end. And like I said, it looks like the, the site was a template, but the, the attention to detail on the content in the center of the site, not only from an SEO perspective has it really been uh, addressed, but from a, a layout and design perspective, it uh, doesn't look like it's been addressed well either. Um, but uh, I think, Robin, your next step was to take a look at the PageSpeed Insights. Is that right? Yeah, so let's first look if it's mobile friendly. Yes, it's mobile friendly, but you can see when I make it smaller, as if I were on a mobile phone, that some of the pictures are getting stretched. Uh, like, for example, that one to fit into the template there. Um, but you can see that the, the content is stacking up and down so that if you're on a mobile phone, you can click on there. Um, but let's take a look at the PageSpeed Insights. So you only have a 47 out of 100, even though you're passing, you are mobile friendly. Um, so this is what your website would look like on a phone. So you can see that you're not getting the same experience that you're getting on the full desktop site homepage. Um, it's you're really missing out on the most important part is you know let, setting the stage and letting uh, people know what you're all about, which this picture does. But then we don't um, have much here without clicking. So the point is we don't want people to have to work and click around to see what you're about. We just want it to be right on there. So uh, this particular mobile site is saying about the course, on-course GPS. So is this what's making you the most money, your on-course GPS, or are you trying to sell golf memberships? So this should probably say membership options. Um, you know, the other thing I want to say there, Robin, see how it says full site? That means that this website's set up so uh, it's, you know, even though the site code itself may be responsive as you shrunk the browser, um, you, by, when I see that full site, I know for a fact that they're using a separate mobile site for that, uh, which means that, uh, you know, people don't want to go to the full site to find what they're looking for. They just want all the stuff that's on the desktop site available on the mobile device. And right now, this is not delivering what people want. You shouldn't have to click on full site to get to the full site and then have to zoom in to stuff to find out how to book my, my banquet or wedding. Right now, that's exactly what I have to do. Uh, I have to click on the full site to, to figure it out. Um, and that can be a very, very frustrating experience. And I can tell you, um, if, if, if any millennials are going to be uh, looking for a wedding venue, if they, have to, if they have to figure out anything that takes just a few seconds, they're going to go on to another venue immediately. So uh, getting the site to be fully responsive and have every site that's on it or every page that's on the desktop be fully responsive and on the mobile, uh, mobile site without having to visit the full site is, is of critical importance. Absolutely. Good points. Thank you very much. All right. So now, Robin, you want to take a quick look at some of the, I know we ventured in there for a second, but search results a little bit for these guys. Yeah, and, uh, just really quick. So you have your mobile score of 47, your desktop is 61. Um, so it's a little bit better on desktop, but these are everything that Google is telling you how to fix. So make sure you tell your web developer, fix all of these for me. And again, these, these sites, this is uh, the Google Mobile Friendly site and the uh, PageSpeed Insights, so very easy to just Google and find that information. 
if you want to give it a try and have a look at it yourself. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at um, some of the results. We have Country Club in Waukegan here. You show up very prominently, probably because of the scope of the the search. So if you're the only club in Waukegan, then you're going to be showing up pretty prominently. I can see though here that you have, there's a few more competitors it looks like. Uh, that's more of a camp, but there's some more golf courses. So if someone was t um, looking for uh, wedding venues, um, you can see, okay, so you're popping up number one here, but you have three reviews. I would probably skip over here and click on the one with all the stars here. That's got 28 reviews. It has, you know, four stars. So let's, uh, I would probably pick that one. And you can see that you have to show up in the top three here to even uh, be in the result page. Otherwise, people will have to click on more places down here. Um, but you can see there's a ton of competition for wedding venues. So if that's something that makes you a ton of revenue, um, then that's something that you definitely want to rank for um, highly. Um, the other thing I could look for is maybe, what else can I look for? Well, maybe some um, out of Waukegan searches might be telling to give us an idea. But as while you're doing that, I just want to mention, as we talked about the reviews, and I know that I've talked uh, with Nick about this a little bit before, but we need to get him over five five-star reviews to get to get him so that his stars will show up because of that scenario we are looking at. You know, the stars are going to win that battle. Uh, it's very easy to take your happy customers and members and just ask them to give you a Google five-star review. If they have an Android phone, they go through Google Maps. It takes a second, and they can go out and do that. Uh, you want to ask them and have them do it while you're with them because once they walk away, those reviews will walk away with them. If they have a, an iPhone, better to maybe see if you have a Facebook page to have them give you a review on there. It's a little more difficult. But one of the easiest and most effective ways without spending a nickel to get your business more prominently featured is to get those reviews. Also, it's going to be good protection from a bad review. Occasionally you get that crazy person, that crackpot, or that really aggravated person who's leaving you a one-star review. If you have many good five-star reviews, you may end up being a 4.9 average, 4.8. If one of your first or second or third reviews is a one-star review, then you're looking at a much lower rating, which will get people to not want to click through and, and, and follow up with you. So that's something that can easily be taken care of and will make a big, big difference in your overall presence. Back to you on that, Robin. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, if you have a one-star review or your competitor, maybe they put a one-star review on your website, and then that's going to show up first. Um, but you can see country clubs in Lake County. here. Is, so you want to rank number one for here. You're at number 12 right now on the local results. Um, maybe you want to rank down here, because this is close to Waukegan. So maybe you want to rank for Lake Bluff County Club, or uh, country club. So let's do like Lake Bluff Country Club. Um, you can see you have a lot of competition here. So if you want to rank above those guys, first you have to have a ton of great content on your website. Um, and then you also have to have a lot of reviews. Uh, another thing you can fix is uh, citations, having your name, address, and phone number consistent across the whole internet, um, which means on Facebook, Yelp, anywhere where your name, address, and phone number shows up. So if I just searched um, Glen Flora, Country Club. You're going to see probably a lot of results here. So you can see Yelp, Facebook, is your name, address, and phone number exactly the same on all of these? See, and this when is we say exactly the same, we mean exactly the same. Yes, every comma, every period, every capital. Um, so you can see this says 2200 North Sheridan Road, Waukegan, Illinois. Uh, Illinois spelled out. Uh, so let's check Google Maps really quick. Uh, Google Maps and search Glen Flora. Okay, so they don't have Illinois spelled out here, but these look the same. Yeah. Uh, so what you would need to do is um, log into this website, create an account. So make sure you use a spam email so you don't get them spamming you every day. Um, but this is a great example, GolfNow or GolfIllinois.com. 
that is a great example of an industry specific citation. So everyone has a Facebook page, everyone has a Yelp page, but not every business is going to be on a golf page. So this is a great place. You can also go to wedding directories, wedding venue directories, and, and get um, on those citations. Those would be worth a lot. Um, so you want to make sure you have the exact name uh, spelled the same all the time, the exact uh, address right here, and the exact phone number. So I can see you have two phone numbers listed here. Let's go ahead and see what's on your website. Um, phone number's down here. It's 6300. So you can't have two phone numbers listed on here. So I would log into this website or call this website, get this changed so this can uh, come off. All right, good stuff. So that gives you a pretty good idea of what you might have ahead of you. Uh, of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't say that Robin and our SEO team could always help with those kind of things if you didn't want to take it on yourself. But all these things will get you where you want to be. So I wanted to uh, move along because we're, we're, we're a little time constraints here and get into our next. But Paul, did we miss anything before we switch over to Britt Carter that you, that you think we should address? Well, yeah, the other thing that I was thinking about is, um, you know, what, what things do they want to be found for? You know, wedding, wedding venue in Lake County. I think they're, they're probably looking to target people outside of Waukegan uh, more so than people in Waukegan. I mean, certainly, there, there's certainly going to be a, a demographic of folks in, in the Waukegan area that uh, will certainly uh, be interested in the different things that they have there, but I'm thinking that a lot of their target audience live outside of Waukegan, so it's one of those things where folks uh, searching for in Lake County, versions of their keywords, a wedding venue, um, or anything else. So. You know, Robin has here uh, wedding venue, and we can see that the Armor House, Deer Path Inn, and Glen Rowan at Lake Forest College come up. Uh, the competition, on, yeah, the competition on that's really low. Eight results in all of Google that have those words in a row. That means if you uh, really worked on trying to get uh, get found for wedding wedding venue uh, in general, you'd probably come up pretty prominently if you took some of this SEO yeah. stuff uh, if seriously. You had, if you had a page on your website that was called Wedding Venue in Lake Forest, you would rank, you know, number one for that. Yeah, like like right away. <laughs> um, let's let's just type bank you know banquet hall because that's kinda kinda in the same space. In Lake Forest. Okay. Gorton comes up, Lake Forest Symphony, I don't know, yeah, events at Independence Grove. So right away, the third result is something in Libertyville, right? And yeah, so already Google's producing results outside of Lake Forest in the top three. Um, so if you had something in, um, in the let's see, so Double Tree in Mundelein comes up, Boca de Beppo and Wheelings. I mean, stuff that's even farther away than you are is showing up for Jimmy bank John's. Hall. Jimmy that's John's. where I want to I mean, have my wedding. <laughs> yeah, have our wedding at Jimmy John's. So, I mean, tremendous opportunity here if you just strategically place words on your site in the right ways uh, to come up for that. I mean, banquet hall uh, in Lake County, just banquet hall. If you have a, just a banquet hall website or a page on your website, you could uh, and have it optimized correctly in all the right ways. A huge opportunity to get found for that. And you know, it, it, if you were if you were to have us do that for you, whether it's through consulting or for, full service, and you booked another ten banquets in your in your space as a result, it would more than pay for itself. Uh, you know, it's just uh, unbelievable what you can do with SEO. It's targeted marketing. People looking for what you do, and if you come up first, they're calling you. And if the you, opportunities that we're showing here are tremendous. I mean, there's yeah. there's an open door waiting for him to walk in and and take yeah. advantage of this and really really set the world on fire here. Well, th think about it this way. So I, I'm looking for a banquet hall. So sc scroll up. So banquet mm -hmm. hall in Lake Forest. So I'm a, a person in Lake Forest. I typed in Lake Forest. I typed in the word banquet hall. My first two options are the only ones that are realistic because it's clo you know, close. Or maybe Independence Grove is, is realistic to me. But uh, right now, none of those pop out to me because they don't have at least five uh, reviews. But if you came up as the first result there or even the third and knocked out Independence Grove and you had, let's say, 
I don't know, 25 star reviews, you're getting the first call. They're going to call you right away. Hey, let me tell you, let me, they, they might even not even visit your website. They may, they may just call from there. Of course, you know, the likelihood is if they're, in, if they're looking at banquet halls, they're going to want to check out the site and see what the space looks like. So let me just, let me just further that point for a moment. So let's say you did show up in this first, uh, the first three results here for banquet hall and they did come to your website. So Robin, go ahead, go back to their website. And let's click on the banquet hall page on their website. Now it's the website's job to close me on the idea that this is the best banquet hall in the area for me to do that. So I would end up going to the weddings events page. I see a picture of a couple. I see a vertical picture, uh, stock photography of people with champagne glasses. Uh, I see something about corporate meetings, which really doesn't have anything to do with uh, a wedding, but maybe you know, maybe it's uh, it's worthwhile. But that beautiful picture that you had on your homepage of the great of that awesome uh, setup on the um, on the on the you know which which one is it? I mean, this is the keep going, Robin. There, this. If I see that right away, like this, the right away, I know that okay, this is the elegant wedding that I want. This is what I want. I'm gonna call these guys right now. That's the feeling we want them to have. Do you have a zoomed out picture of that space that really makes me uh, think that this is what I want? I mean, you have a tiny picture here. This looks need, like a hallway. Yeah, yeah. We we need we need big grandiose. We gotta make them feel like this is the place. And I'm not getting that from these pictures. So you know, coming up in the search results is one thing. But then when I finally get to the website, you gotta you gotta close the deal, and 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 the site's not closing the deal, and it's not ranking. So you got two two strikes against you. So we gotta get those things fixed. Yeah, you're also missing a blog here. So you have tons of opportunities to blog about the weddings, about the golf course. So that's definitely something you could add. All right. So Paul, my last question for you on this subject is: I just want to make sure there are no questions popping up. Yeah, I'm watching that right now. No questions popping up now. Okay. All right, fair but enough. We, so I, think, uh, I think we give uh, the Glenn Flora and Nick Jones a pretty good feel for how they've done so far and where they're at and the opportunities that they have to go forward. Paul, as long as you're over there and you're sort of on a roll, you want to take the first look at our Britt Carter site. Yeah, and anyone can ask questions at any time, so feel free to ask questions in the question box about anything, anything about online marketing. Fantastic. And I think the, the gentleman that was in our uh, Gaibo event, Get Your Business Online, was uh, Jeremy. Was that his name, if I remember correctly? I believe that's right. Yeah. Oh, and Nick Nick Jones just said on the webinar, he just uh, submitted a comment, thanks for the input. So th I'm glad that we were able to help Nick. Oh, good. Um, hopefully we'll be able to get in contact with you and see if we can um, get things uh, get things going, get some more wedding venues booked at your place. Yeah, right, I'll absolutely so, be sending him the link to uh, so he can rewatch that or share that information sure. around with uh, his colleagues over there as well. Sure, absolutely. All right, so here, Britt Carter. We're taking a look at this. First impressions. I, I love the big slideshow. I love uh, – I'm, I'm getting discounts right away when I get to the site, so I love that I get, I get to see that. Beautiful pictures of the furniture that are there. I, I see couches. The lighting on the furniture is just absolutely wonderful. Uh, everything looks very high end, so I'm sure that uh, I know that they're located in Lake Forest, uh, even though I can't tell that from the first impression on the site. But uh, I do get the idea that uh, you know this this is uh, this is really uh, nice furniture, um, perfect for for furnishing. Uh, my home and, and, and everything looks really elegant. So if that's the feeling I'm supposed to get, I'm getting that right away from here. Uh, most of the stuff I'm seeing is is more of the common living space stuff. So I see I see those common living spaces here. But when I kind of glance up at the navigation, I see living room, dining room, uh, bedroom. I think I did say yeah. There's a dining room right here. Uh, home office lighting. So maybe getting a mix uh, of those different pictures here. Robin, you want to try selecting some of that text there in the slides? Yeah. So that's I I figured that that's embedded in the pictures itself. So that makes it easy to position those uh, that text in the pictures, but Google cannot read any of that. So if you want any of those words, or those any of those words are important to getting ranked for some of the different things you do, uh, you you definitely want to get those as real text rather than text embedded in pictures. Uh, the other comment that I made at the very beginning was 
you know, I don't know where they're located by just looking at this. And obviously, we have the ability to click on Google Maps up there, and you know, I could click that. But you know, where where is this? It could be in New York. It could be in Seattle, but I have no idea where they are. First impressions. I have to scroll down to look, and right here we have Lake Forest Showroom, South Barrington Showroom. Why not just have little things uh, in the upper right that says Lake Bar Barrington, you know, and and Lake Forest? Uh, so that'd be that'd be great to have up there. Uh, let's see, design services about us. Contact Google Maps. Um, those those items that are in blue underneath the search box. And the items that are above the search box, my my account, wish list, checkout, login, that is all vi much more prominent visually than the actual things that you sell in the gray bar. So I would even uh, suggest that maybe the main items that you sell should be more prominent, maybe blue color, so they stand out. Because right now it's white text on a gray background. Um, unless the design services is your money maker, but again, you you kind of want to think about well, what are the different things that I have here featured in the navigation, and which ones would um, would drive more people to my business for what I sell and do that make me money. And right now, uh, the Google Maps I don't think is as important. Uh, the contact us is of course important about us. You can throw that stuff on the on the homepage, but uh, yeah, I think you have the opportunity to really feature. The, the different furniture pieces you sell is, is more prominent. Yeah, this, this I would definitely throw at the beginning of the navigation here, the design yeah. services. Because it goes with that stuff. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you know, the, this, this navigation, the gray bar with the white text, you gotta, you got to make that stand out some, somewhat better in some way because right now it kind of just blends in. Let's see, what else? So we have a lot of different furniture pieces online so I can actually shop some of the stuff that you sell on the website and look at the pieces, which is really cool. I was going to comment the search box in the upper right isn't necessary unless they actually have things that they can find and, and search, but you do, so that's great that you have that there. But at the same time, there's only 48 pieces, so I mean, to look through 48 pieces, you know, I can look at all, pretty much all of them in one second right here, you know? Right. Well, you, yeah. you do have, I think that's 48 pieces in the dining room category. Yeah. Uh, it's, um, so then if I wanted to look at just tables, I could look at just tables. There's only 10 items, so, you know, okay. I don't think you really need the search box if I can just scroll down and see them within a few seconds. Right. Uh, let's see. What else can we do here? Scroll back up. Because if anything, that'll disappoint people. Because you have what? so few products that if you, you know... Okay, if I have the choice between 0 and 10,000 or 10,000 above, that's not really a search option. That's just too different price points. Uh, collection, uh, they all have one search result, so this search box is, is not very functional. Right. Well, it would be if they had a lot more yeah. lot more items. Yeah, if you have a ton more items, and then I would definitely have that in. But right now, it looks like it's more of the you want them to call you, and then that you design together. Mm -hmm. I'd be curious how, uh, how, how many folks are contacting them based on what they're finding on the website. Uh, in the store, the shopping cart area. And if you have more options than this, that's something I would definitely put on, you know, the top here. Like these are just some samples. We also have more. Well, you know what? The interesting thing is, I remember talking to Jeremy a little bit about this, and he said that, you know, they have one of the best showrooms uh, in the area in Lake Forest. I, I didn't really talk to him about the Lake Bluff, or I'm sorry, the um, South Barrington store. But he said he had one of the best showrooms in Lake Forest, but nobody really knows where it is. Mm -hmm. uh, but the problem is, if I click on any of the different items uh, at the top in the gray bar here, I don't, I don't see anything about the showroom. I just have yeah, a, have a huge picture here. Of, yeah, yeah, have a huge picture of bedrooms, and then put like you know three paragraphs on bedrooms. Mm -hmm. uh, but also, yeah, you can also shop. So it, it just depends on how you want to structure it, but mm. if there's nothing uh, if there's nothing that Google can read on here, I mean, they can read Nightstand or Willa, but um, you want to make sure that you have the full user experience, giving a few lines of saying, here's some great furniture, this is what makes it high quality, you can come see a showroom, like all that in type of information needs to be on all these pages and written in a different way so that it's not duplicate content. You think of, think about the, the the type of shopper. I mean, we're we're 
computer people. And we help people with uh, you know selling products on Amazon, etc. These types of pieces, if, I, if I'm in the market for this kind of stuff, I, I want to go there and look at it. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, the fact that I can go ahead and click on that nightstand, Robin. So I can click on this. Yeah, I only have the one picture. I can't tell much about it. I mean, yeah, you can zoom in, but even from the Amazon perspective, if if I want to sell a product that's twenty bucks, I got to do a really, really good job of showing eight different pictures and have a great description to compel me to want to buy the twenty dollar item online. And if I'm going to be spending a lot more than twenty dollars, which in this case is a couple, you know, twelve hundred bucks, uh, about. I, yeah, again, we have to even do a better job. And I think, yeah, the site could be better served rather than having... Uh, but I can't actually pieces. buy it, right? Uh, There's nowhere to you buy it. You can add it to your wish list, Robin. But I Is there can't anything actually at the buy this. No. Yeah, so I think the site could be better served by saying, you know, hey, you know, we have these beautiful-looking uh, portfolio pieces in living rooms, dining rooms, bedrooms, home office, etc., and feature... A lot of the different things that you that you do is representative of what they will find in the store and draw them into coming into the store because I think the the folks and I could be wrong but I think that uh, the folks that are coming to the site uh, and that are going to buy this kind of uh, uh, kind of furniture are going to want to come in and you have to convince them to come in and right now the listing a whole bunch of different furniture pieces and then getting the piece and not even having the ability to buy it. Uh, that's disappointing to me. So uh, I want to, you know, I want to be convinced that I should go to the showroom. You said the showroom is as huge and fabulous. Give me pictures of the showroom. Tell me why I should come in. Tell me it's it's you. You have really happy uh, people that are going to help me uh, pick out the perfect set for my house. Uh, yeah, there, there's all sorts of things that could be done better to draw me in. So the home page gives me that nice clean look, uh, but when I start clicking through the site. I'm not as um, not as impressed and wanting to come in. Robin, you want to take a you know, take a couple minutes on this page? Yeah. Um, so this is everything you're trying to sell here. Um, but the chances that someone clicks here instead of clicking on these like really colorful, you know, pictures and and things they want to see. So you, but what you're trying to do on this website is create a feel, and then. It looks like you are trying to draw them into uh, for the design services as your main thing that you sell. So the furniture is almost an afterthought. What you really want is to connect with people and sell them the specific things and design it for them. Um, so the design services, you could even organize your website like this. So you have living room design, dining room design, bedroom design, and then under each one of those you can um, just write a page similar to this, um, what your theory is for living room design and and things like that, and then have a one page over here that says um, furn- uh, view furniture or you know shop shop, and then you can shop all the furniture. Um, so that's another way to do it. Um, but I do like this setup as well. So it just depends on what your business goal is. If your business goal is to sell the furniture directly from the site, you have it set up perfectly, with minus the buy button. But um, if you want your main thing is to sell the design services, then have a whole bunch of pages telling about your design services for each one of these that you're selling. Um, so um, I would definitely have a blog on this website too. It's definitely uh, the kind of area that you would want to write about, give people ideas about, write about trends, write about um, design concepts, maybe um, you know feng shui or something like that. So you could write about uh, any kind of stuff. You can write about the designers too. You could feature each designer. So it's uh, you Great could stuff. Write before, before I and after. Other couple little things for me. I mean these are small things compared to what the things you're talking about but copyright date at the bottom is not current. We always want to make sure that it is. So we have that that we like to clean up. And always look, you know, there's not a call for an appointment. Call. There's not a real Strong, I don't believe, call to action on that page either. Right. I had Robin pull up this page. I was just looking at Steinhoffels and Lazy Boy and Ikea, um, and obviously you know, so, some bigger furniture sellers in, in the world, and not to compare uh, the Brit furniture to these types of furniture, but this page kind of drew me in a little bit because they first told me that they have a story to tell. 
and that kind of drew me in. And then they kind of categorize, okay, sofas and armchairs, TV media. I don't like the the stuff that they wrote under there, although it does give me some idea of the different things that they have. But it gives me kind of an overview of you know what they have to offer. Um, which is which is kind of the direction we're looking to go, uh, but yeah, the as I scroll down, finding the dream living room. So we're we're trying to sell an idea of of what what this what their product is going to do, rather than jumping right into the products themselves. So that's yeah, if you have actual clients' homes that uh, you can use those pictures, that would be great because you're se you are selling the idea of this could be my home, this could be my dream home, versus I want to buy that one furniture piece. Scroll down a little bit more. I think some of the pictures underneath are pretty powerful. If you go down to the carpet and the chair at the bottom there. So, yeah, here's here's a chair in somebody's home. Or here's a carpet, and you see the shoes on the stairs and stuff on the right. But here, here's the rug, flat woven. Yeah, so, again... It's a lifestyle versus yeah. just one product. Yeah, exactly. So I think that you know that's the kind of direction to to draw them in and make them want to explore more, and that's that's kind of what you want to do if uh, if you're you know putting the site together to get them to convert from a visitor into a buyer or a visitor inside the store. All right, and that's what it's all about. Now uh, we are running up against the clock a little bit, so can we run through the the uh, mobile friendly and sure. and uh, we can... real quick? We can see that your website is indeed mobile friendly, but we see the score is very low, 32 out of 100. Um, this is why it's low. Uh, some of the pictures need to be, uh, they look like super high quality pictures, but they're too big, so it's making your website load slower, which it's loading. Um, not that slow, but 1.5 seconds. You want to see it under a second. So there are a couple things here that you definitely need to fix in order to make it faster. And one of the biggest things you can do is reduce the size of those pictures. Uh, so they'll look the exact same size on the website. They'll, they'll be exactly, you know, this size. But um, the actual file will be, will be smaller. So it'll look exactly the same, um, but it will load faster. Um, Another thing, a couple things you can do, uh, that's under optimized images and compressing images. Uh, what you want to do is name the pictures correctly so you can see that some of these are just like Facebook image, Twitter image, PNG image. So these ones you want to make sure that um, the size is correct so that some of these buttons are, are still too large. Um, so fixing these little things on your website will make the user experience better as well. And then as long as we, we, we broach that subject, I know we're running short on time, as I said, but naming the pictures, can you just talk about that briefly, you know, what, what the benefits of doing that? Sure, yeah. Don't name this Dining Room Furniture 1, Dining Room Furniture 2. Um, you want to make sure you name this like this, Solana Round Dining Table. You can see that's... Uh, misspelled Maybe it's unless called it's a ding table. Ding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but if you have your keyword, which is dining room, in, in the background of all of these pictures, it doesn't necessarily have to be right here. But buffet, I mean, you could be ranking for, you know, a seafood buffet online. So you want to make sure that you put dining room furniture buffet or wooden buffet or something like that. Um, in the background, so it's called the alt text. Um, there's a space and the file name. So the file name and the alt text will not show up on the front of, of your website, only this will show up, but Google can read the picture based on what you name those. So if you name every single picture correctly on here um, with a dis short description with the keyword in it, which would be dining room um, or dining room buffet table, and then the, these, these pictures will start to rank better and your Google will understand that your website is not just about buffet and about moderno, it's about um, you sell dining room furniture, and we're going to rank you high for dining room furniture. Or it could be your keyword could be high end furniture or high end dining room furniture. Um, so it just depends on what you want to rank for, but you can go ahead and, and put those in your pictures. It's very, very important. Um, now, if we search interior design on Lake Forest, we don't see you in the top three there, but we do see you at about maybe number eight here. All you need is one more review, and you're going to um, get those five stars to pop up on here. And then with your website, if you fix some of those pictures and uh, 
you know, put some more content on your website, you could pop up to the number one result here. All right, so there's some opportunity there, and you're with the stars. You're you're right there. A couple more reviews; those will be popping up for you. Uh, that'll benefit you right away. But we got some work to do to uh, to get the the rankings up where we'd like to see them. How are we doing here? What are you looking for, Terry? I was I was just wondering, did Robin drop off or? Is this... No, I'm here. Oh, there you are. Okay, so you yeah. put up. So this here, where are we find? Are we finding them on this search here? Where Interior Design North Shore. Is that where we find them down in the 9 hole? Let's see. No, they're not showing up. Okay, so not showing up, but you know, you see here, you see most people here without enough reviews, there's no stars. And uh, a lot of these are not even, I mean, some of those were looked like they were in the city even. So, and a lot of them are not in the North Shore. So I think there's a lot of opportunity here as well to, to move up and to really uh, get prominently ranked up here with some work. Some of the Can we do stuff. just uh, Furniture Lake Forest and just see what comes up there? So just I'm just looking for furniture. Who can I go to? Great, they come really? up first. But you know who's getting the calls. Well, furniture. if I'm renting, it's going to be them. Yeah. So obviously they sell. So that's that's a different uh, different situation, but yeah, that's that's good. So let's try South Barrington. Just give it a, give that a shot. Okay, so they're coming up there too. So I mean, you're coming up in the two different areas, but here, um, our house, uh, Thomas Price, and then Brit and uh, Brit Carter and Company. Yeah, if you want to get all these calls, get some reviews on there. Uh, on your uh, on your South Barrington location, then you'll start getting all those phone calls right away. So I mean, you have the opportunities there, but um, like like we talked about before on the uh, you know earlier in this webinar, you you want to draw them in. So the site has to do a fantastic job of closing me on. I need to go and visit this place. So that's uh, that's the feeling you want to sell. So th so they actually come in and start shopping. Our house is one of like the highest end furniture places. They have a couple locations around the North Shore, and when you walk into the store, you're just like transformed into a different place. So if your showroom is just like that, like our house, you definitely want the showroom to be at the forefront. I mean, you can see these pictures. I mean, is your living room on the side of the ocean? Probably not. But does this look amazing and pretty, and you want to buy from them? Definitely. I think that's where Paul's living right now. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. I wish. <laughs> so you can think again about the story. Create your own story. You can create your own fabrics. You can do all this kind of kind of stuff. So um, you can even customize furniture. So if this is something you offer, definitely let people know. So they let you know everything on this first homepage right here. Although they don't have a lot of words on their homepage, it's all pictures. That's another strategy you can go with. But I would definitely recommend having a lot of words on your homepage. So Google knows what you're all about. Um, their strategy is more to sell in person, and you know, so they're not as concerned about having this, you know, the whole story on the in the front front page. But um, for a smaller boutique place, that would definitely be way more important. All right, fantastic. I think we got them covered pretty well, and I think they have some good insight on where they stand and uh, what they can do to improve their overall online presence. So we are pushing the clock a little bit, and I know that Robin and Paul could talk about that stuff for the whole rest of the day, but we're down to the wire here. So I want to go now. You want to a face to everybody that you see at our company while you're at it there, and I want to remind you again of our services before we let you go. So again, responsive websites, the Google virtual tours, the Amazon seller consulting. And of course, of course, the search engine optimization, and uh, we are here to help with our webinars on a weekly basis every Thursday, either at 12:30 Central or 3 o'clock Central. We rotate them, and you can find them all on the website. Again, if you found this valuable information, we sure would love a five-star Google review, and you can do that right through our website as well as through Google Maps. There you go. Thank you, and uh, we appreciate you guys coming by, and we are here to answer your questions every Thursday. So, Paul, anything you want to sum up for us? 
No, no, I think that's great. So, you know, thank you for joining us, and I hope uh, we were able to provide you some very useful and meaningful information about your sites. And coming next week, we're going to change our format a little bit. We're going to do one featured business, and we're going to start uh, doing some different how-tos and SEO tips. So that's something that I think uh, a lot of people will find valuable. And then we'll be able to link to those in some of our blog content as well. Perfect. So bring your friends and bring your questions. And we look forward to seeing you next week at our webinar. And, of course, uh, you can contact us through our website. If you're interested in getting some more information, uh, I'll be glad to talk to you about any of those subjects. And I want to thank Robin for doing a great job, as always. Paul, thanks for turning over the reins and for your insight. And uh, we look forward to seeing everybody next week. Take care. Bye-bye.